Man, all these downtime actions require money, except for theft. <laughs> I don't want to steal a lizard. <laughs> Maybe you could steal from that hypothetical wandering peddler that Brick Road said we could buy things from. <laughs> Very notably. Burn that bridge early. Very notably, this time, they don't strip you of your weapons and gear. Thetakis just directs you back to uh, your quarters, such as they are, so that you can recuperate after the long journey back. And he goes to give his report to Huyan. Is anybody doing anything that night? The night that you were, that you uh, arrive back at Shallow Scale Village. If not, then the next morning, sun comes up, and a couple of nondescript lizard men arrive to bring you to Huyan's shelter. Alright, let's go. Thetakis has, for lack of a better term, he's talked you guys up to Huyan. He was very impressed with how you handled all of the undead. Uh, how you went above and beyond, how you went out of your way to destroy hordes of zombies, and then delved deeper into the dungeon than any of the lizard men ever have in order to find the seed of corruption, <clears throat> root it out and destroy it. Did any of you mention or describe to Thetakis what happened down in the magic chamber? Have any of you revealed any of that? No, I mostly no. spent my time explaining that it turned out the seed of corruption was humans again. <laughs> As always. As is want. Um, I find it hard to believe Adrix would not bring it up at some point during the march back. So how did Adrix bring it up? Like, what did he say? <laughs> Just Hey, check out this cool thing on my hand now as he spreads his fingers apart and puts them back together again. <laughs> so you just show him the markings. Yeah. Fedekes doesn't think much of the markings. Uh, lizard men in general will wear markings like that. Especially what they'll do is they'll get scarred in combat and then they'll like decorate the scar by turning it into a tattoo or a scale painting or incorporating... <laughs> Uh, piercings or beads or something like that. So he, his opinion is that as warriors who have bloodied themselves in this dungeon, the lot of you have chosen to adorn yourselves as such, and he approves. <laughs> but as, if you don't demonstrate the magic for him, he doesn't put two and two together. He's a, he's a lizard man. And I don't think Adrix is smart enough to demonstrate that this actually triggers magic. <laughs> okay. So if none of you had this conversation with Thetakis, maybe you pointed out, then Huyan doesn't know either. Although she does immediately recognize uh, the rune, specifically on Red's face. His is right on his lips. It's impossible to miss. Right. Unless he's doing something to hide it. Nope. Okay. Then she inquires as to the nature of the marking. And that's the only one that you see that she's noticed so far. She hasn't seen the rest of you guys. Uh, they're either on your hands or they're covered up by your armor. Um, there was a chamber at the bottom of the... What was it, a temple? Yeah. Not entirely sure. No, I mean, this, I'm saying this out loud. Well, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> that uh, has some sort of strange source of power, and upon escaping from the chamber with it I found this mark on myself she says that you escaped such a place with your lives is an indication that you are either extremely fortunate or extremely cursed we did it through quick thinking and study But she tells you that she's heard everything that Thetakis had to report. And she is inclined to make the the offer that she previously made as a threat. Uh, 
she now extends as a request that the message that you brought her previously indicating that her lord father, an ancient red <clears throat> dragon, will be sending troops in this direction. She thinks that people like you would be able to help stand in defense of shallow scale uh, her swamp and her forest. Windy nods. She thinks that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. We like helping people. Mm -hmm. It's like our thing. And I mean, she's defending her own swamp and her own people. It's not like she's asking us to go to kill her enemies. She or says, funny you should mention that. I have a long <laughs> list of enemies here. Razu, is, Razu remains silent for a few minutes and then speaks up, says... By what right is it yours if you can't defend it yourself? She says during their last your last conversation, her right was a position of strength. She had you surrounded by armed lizard man guards who she trusted with her own life to defend their territory. And you were she made sure that you were unarmed. There was no way you were going to leave her lake alive except through her permission. But now you've proven your strength. She says, the thing to understand about my scale folk here is that strength is the only thing that they recognize. And yet, we're just five people. What about, you know, you say your father's going to send his forces. I'm pretty sure he's going to send more than five people. She says she's going to... zombies. <laughs> you killed exactly five zombies. <laughs> She says she's going to let you in on a secret when it comes to true dragons. She says that there's something about the nature of immortality that makes a creature like a dragon inherently cowardly. They fear for their lives in ways that no mortal creature can. And she thinks she can use that cowardice against her father. And you can see she kind of eyeballs Adrix a little bit while she says this. <laughs> Adrix is staring at the ceiling, not interested in the conversation. He's cool look, tap. looking up at the thatch <laughs> roof of the hut, counting yeah. the straws. <laughs> Birdie pokes Adrix in the back and points at the dragon and says, Don't antagonize the dragon. <laughs> Yeah, she says here in the lake they have many advantages over invading forces. There's a lot that can be done here to repel people who are not used to fighting in these kind of close quarters. Uh, they can use the water, the trees, the land to their advantage. In fact, right now she's got her lizard folk out and about in the woods uh, resetting traps and snares. Uh Guard towers. Advantageous positions. What is... So Birdie says don't antagonize the dragon. <laughs> Pay attention and don't antagonize the dragon. What's Red's thought as far as standing in defense of shallow scale? I see no reason why it wouldn't be better for us to fight together. At some point, the dragon may come for us as well. Who who are we to him? Be, be completely frank. Who are we to this dragon? We, he doesn't even know we exist. Kuyan says she considers that an advantage as well. She says, make no mistake, the dragon will not come out of his lair himself. He will send some small token number of shock troops, probably kobolds, perhaps goblin or orc mercenaries. And you're right, if I cannot repel such a force from this place, I don't deserve to hold it. But exactly. I assure you, I deserve to hold it. 
she tells you she has a couple days worth of preparation to make. And you all are welcome to uh, relax, lick your wounds here in the village while she puts everything together. But that she does have some important tasks that she thinks the five of you are well suited to. The kind of tasks that lizard men are not exactly built for. Very well. So who wants to resolve their downtime action first? Because you're going to have a couple days here in shallow scale with not much else to do. Uh, Wendy was going to do theft. No, listen. Wendy's plan is she has decided she wants to be a chef. Okay. However, it turns out that costs 25 gold pieces per week. <laughs> okay. So I have been looking through this at the most efficient way of raising 25 gold pieces. And it seems to me that is bare knuckle boxing. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to start up a pit fighting ring in shallow scale? I am going to start up a pit fighting ring in shadow scale. Oh, this... Wendy thinks about it for like a good like few moments and she's just like, okay, I have here's my goal. How do I come about it? Looks Punch around things. the room. I see a lot of mud. And I see a lot of fighters. Let's punch the fighters until they give me money. <laughs> Unfortunately, gambling requires a stake of ten gold. And I don't have ten gold. <laughs> so Wendy's going to spend the week <clears throat> setting up pit fighting. Mm-hmm. Not, not unless, uh, not unless you people are willing to let let Razu take it out of the kitty, which I'm pretty sure you're not going to. <laughs> I mean, Adrix is the one holding the money. All you got to do is lie to Adrix. <laughs> I'm going to give it to the poor. That's great. Win your dude. money like a man. Fight. Join this pit fighting ring that I'm starting up. Look. There is a 0% chance you're going to earn even 50 gold pit fighting in shallow scale. Yeah. Instead, we'll we'll just convert this to silver, considering your locale. Well, wait. Can I fight against someone for the right for them to teach me this lizard man gumbo? Because that's my <laughs> eventual goal. And I don't think these lizard men are going to be like, yeah, that's 25 gold pieces either. No, if you want to learn the gumbo, they can do. we can just forego all the pit fighting stuff. That's what I want. Is I want to train my cook, my cooking. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm kind of sad that we went from like I'm going to pit fight to learn to cook, to, just learning to cook. Like, I'm a little top chef shadow, shallow scale. Because I'm not. So, the secret ingredient is violence. Well, we're gonna call this. Well, I'm definitely probably putting some blood in here. So, Wendy, we're gonna call this work. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and the ability check we're going to have you make. <clears throat> we're going to call it wisdom perception. All right. They put you to work going out into the lake and acquiring the foodstuffs they're going to use to make the gumbo. And this work is particularly, uh, tedious for you because you can't fly while doing it. You've got to stay down at the lake level, down in the muck with a spade looking for looking for bugs certain types of weeds, coming back and learning that oh they, they asked for the three leafed kind and you brought the five leaf kind so they, they're going to put you to, to work all week so yeah, go ahead and make a wisdom perception check alright I accidentally went to character classes rather than my actual character. Things are difficult. Okay, I'm rolling right now. That's a 17. <clears throat> okay, so all things considered, you live a comfortable lifestyle for the week. And, okay. And that just means you're 
kind of more well fed than the typical lizard man. Usually here at shallow scale, they only take uh, what they need for sustenance. But since you're learning the ins and outs of lizard man cuisine, you're eating all kinds of interesting and fascinating things. Whatever, I'm a bird. <laughs> Who else has a downtime action for me? You should let Adrix go next. Should I? Yeah. Is it pit fighting? No, it's not pit fighting. <laughs> I think it's a fun follow-up, though. Okay. So, here's the thing. At third level, as a fighter, I get a student of war feature, which gives me proficiency in an artisan's tools. Mm -hmm. And for some inexplicable reason, brewer's supplies counts as yeah. artisan tools. So yes. He's got yeah. proficiency now yep. in brewer's supplies. So You and me, man, once I get that chef's kit. For his downtime action, um... I think he should be gathering his components for his brewer su brewer supplies and start brewing. Does he actually have the tools yet, or just the proficiency? Just the proficiency. He doesn't have the tools yet. So he's just going out and gathering like interesting looking fruit that he might want to ferment. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're not taking any of the actions out of the book. That's what you want to spend a week doing: is filling up a sack of potential brewing supplies yes sir unless you wanted to expound it into something else like oh it's actually fits under research or crafting an item or something uh, but i'm just well content with under research actually i'm i am just content with yeah no he's he's getting fruit he's getting bottles he's getting what does it say hops several feet of tubing <laughs> Okay, mark down on your sheet that you've collected all that stuff over the course of the week. Right on. And who else has something for me? Uh, Red was going to use his uh, Poisoner's Kit to craft a vial of basic poison. Okay. Imagine there's like snakes to milk or something here. So I believe that actually I can only make half progress to it if you make 50 gold pieces of progress a week. Uh, where are you looking for that? In uh, crafting an item, downtime action. Gotcha. One would think that making poison would be a crime, but apparently crime is a different downtime action. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way that I fly to you. Wow. I'm so tired really? of the door right now. So tired. <laughs> and Nodal does it, you're like, aw, Nodal. And I do it, you're like, fuck you, McDole. What type of poison are you making? Uh, I was just going to do the basic unless I, I... I don't have the DMG, and I haven't looked up if there are other more interesting types. There are. They're all in the DMG. Let me go grab right, them real quick. I can, yeah, I can look that up. I, I have a feeling it'll take multiple months of work to do anything that isn't basic. I think all of like the exotic poisons require stuff like wit, wyvern venom and stuff. I don't know, making a poison has to be pretty easily if you can compel snakes. <laughs> <laughs> hey buddy, spot me a little bit of that venom. Spit in this jar for me. <laughs> hiss, 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 hiss. Does Birdie or Razu have anything for me? Uh, well, he's looking at poisons. Barty was just just going to work, like just see what he could do around the camp, like uh, you know, you never know when a small pair of hands will come in handy. What kind of work can he do? Uh, he can, you know, climb and uh, climb trees and stuff like that. Make a strength Ready athletics check. Darn, I was hoping you'd say uh, acrobatics, but okay. He can jump up trees. <laughs> he just jumps super high. Okay. Uh, 19. Ooh. Okay. So, yeah, you tell them, hey, I can climb trees. I'm really good at climbing. I got these little dragon claws. I can shimmy up like a squirrel. And, yeah, they put you to work, too. They send you out into the lake. They give you lists of things that need to be gathered out of treetops. And you're up and down trees all day long. And that was just a 19 straight up. 
Yeah, I, I have plus zero on my strength. And you live a comfortable lifestyle for the week as you earn more rations than the standard lizard man. Um, actually, going by the DMG poisons, I think I would make a. Uh, what do we think is most useful here? Truth serum. Oh man. Truth serum would be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll start my work on it towards the truth serum then. That'll take three weeks, but. Coat the it weapon. Takes... And... Three weeks to create it, or you just don't have the materials for it yet? To craft it, it would be 50 gold pieces of progress per week, and it's 150. Okay. Um, it's only DC 11 saving throw, and you have to they have to eat it, so this isn't exactly, like, combat useful, but yeah. No, this is totally cool. true. You're, you're yeah. a mastermind. If you can't get him to eat a poisoned cracker, you don't deserve it. Right, exactly. Title. Okay, so yeah, just mark somewhere that you've made 50 gold worth of pro progress towards that. And that leaves Rasu. Rasu is going to work as well. Right. Uh, she's well, going to teach the uh, lizard men some of these, uh, some of the techniques that she learned while she was in training with the hobgoblin peoples. Okay, so you're teaching them to fight with a halberd. If the halberd, uh, you know, basic military. Basically, military, basic military unit tactics, that kind of stuff. The very basic stuff, like form ranks, setting spears, that kind of stuff. Okay. Roll me charisma persuasion. You're gonna have to persuade these lizard men that your way of thinking, when it comes to military style, is better than their way, which is straight up guerrilla tactics. That is a nineteen. A nineteen. Like guerrilla tactics are all well and good, but occasionally you will have to fight, fight a, a large force against your own large force. And in that case, it, it pays to have organization. So, with Thetakis vouching for you all over the city, telling you that he's seen you and your little unit fighting the way that you work together and hold a line against the undead monsters that you faced, some of the lizard men see wisdom. And you teach them some moves. Also earning nice. you a comfortable lifestyle for the week. You get more bug stew than the standard lizard. Yay! Week. Show me your moves. So the way you hold the line, except for that asshole who keeps jumping around. Is Wendy going to maintain a recipe book, then? Oh, yeah. No, listen, <laughs> I already have a text document open. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Towards the end of the week, Huyan comes down as you all are in the commons. And she tells you she has a very important task. One that she would trust to her lizard folk if her lizard folk had. As she pauses, she wants to put it delicately. If they had a semblance of social graces. She needs somebody who can do a little bit of sweet talking. She says the bodies that you found. The kobolds. Uh, in the clearing. The ones that were hanged from a tree. She says that her, mm -hmm. some of her scouts. Just outside of their borders. Out in the edges of the woods. Kind of near to where you found the kobolds. They have found similar sites with the strange symbol burned into the ground, uh, but always with orcs, always a small cadre of orcs, uh, usually no more than three or four. She tells you that this is problematic for her. She says the largest orc, uh, tribe in the area are called Zolag's Butchers. And before her arrival here in Shallow Scale, when it was just the lizard folk on their own, uh, they were more nomadic, moving around the lake and the forest, and the orcs gave them all end, or no end of trouble. They were not able to hold them off during the raids. What Huyan did when she arrived is she gathered up a great amount of gifts, things from the lake that the orcs can use, especially fish, edible insects, different 
herbs and plants for medicines, gathered them together, went out and met one of these orc bands and explained that she and her scale folk would pay them tribute if they would agree to uh, recognize their borders. This was win-win for the orcs because when they did attack, they would usually raid the place and get what they wanted, but not without significant loss of life. Fighting in the in the swamps against the guerrilla tactics of the lizard folk is not precisely an orc's forte. So this has been a symbiotic relationship for the past couple of years. What she's worried of is that this war band of orcs is going to think that she's broken her pacts, that, that she's behind these killings, these mysterious deaths. She wants to make sure that the orcs are smoothed over before she has to worry about kobolds marching from the west. I have some skill in negotiations. First of all, does anybody speak orc? Um, Adrix does. Adrix does. Okay, very good. And that's not one of the <laughs> languages either. It's something he actually has. Okay. Uh, so, Wendy, a large portion, uh, and Birdie too, a large portion of the things you guys have been gathering all week, you see are being loaded into a boat. Uh a specially engineered kind of boat because once you get it out of the lake and onto land there's an axle that you can affix wheels to so you can drag it over land and she tasks Adrix with this job considering he's the strongest among you you've been you've been drafted as a rickshaw driver (laughs) you got it buddy if Adrix's arguments fall through I have spent the last mission deciding that I uh, am currently worthy of wielding Beacon Song so I can assist in our persuasions. <laughs> she says that dealing with orcs is a very... You have to walk a very thin line. These are evil creatures. They are vicious. They are depraved and they don't think twice about killing anything that's smaller than them. I have found Beacon Song to be very persuasive in the past. Is anybody among you... I'm going to assume Rasu has experience fighting orcs in the field. Yes. And I would also assume that Birdie at some point would as well, because his patron dragon is just south of orc territory. And Adrix must, too, if he knows the language. Yeah. So you know what she's talking about. She says, basically, there's three things that she would consider a good outcome. A good outcome would be to just ensure that Zorok's butchers know that Shallow Scale's not the one behind the attacks. And that they're not planning to actively invade and attack the lizards. A better outcome would be that you get the orcs to agree to remain neutral when and if her father's army comes through. In other words, dispel any desire they might have to side with him when they come through. The best outcome... Go ahead. No, go ahead. Keep going. The best outcome would be to persuade them to actively bleed her father's army as it marches east to hassle and prick them as they come across the plains. So by the time they arrive, they've lost some of their strength. (laughs) I'm sure we're not going to have any problems dealing with the orcs. (laughs) Idrix nods. Okay. (laughs) She says she needs this task completed uh, inside of 10 days. How far away are the orcs? Their actual den, she doesn't know the location of it. Uh, She's never been here. Let me get the world map back out here, and I'll ping a couple places where she thinks they might be. 
Okay, so shallow scale is here in the lake. She thinks their den is somewhere over here in these foothills. But the orc raiding territory kind of encompasses everywhere around the shallow scale forests. So she says it won't be necessary to go find the den, and that would actually be very, very suicidal on your part. Very few people can walk into an actual orc uh, den and then walk back out alive. More than likely, what you'll have to do is find one of their roaming patrols out in the wilderness. How do you typically offer them their tribute? She says very openly and with no weapons showing. Is there, but is there a location or time? How would they know to collect it? What they've been doing usually is just taking uh, a boat, and she motions to the one that's being loaded up right now, just taking it out to the borders of the forest and then leaving it there. And she knows this has been working because the orcs have not attacked since. But you're going to have to go out in the wilderness with this wagon, essentially, and do a little bit of hunting. Any other questions? Hmm... Seems fairly straightforward. Birdie has... Uh, well, the Birdie doesn't have winning character, but, like, would this be the same group, kind of out of character, would this be the same group, it's territory that attacked the dragon? Sure, if you want. I mean... If that'll make it more fun for you. <laughs> I mean... I mean, there's, there's warring orc tribes all over this territory. Okay. I, uh, I was just clarifying on whether it was, like, one big... Or, like, just a bunch of different ones. Like, these ones would be localized in these mountains. They'd probably do a lot of patrolling in the foothills. Uh, the forest in this area is particularly choice because the forest to the north is filled with fairies, and fairies are bastards. <laughs> that checks out. Going too far <laughs> east or west, you start running into dragons and yan and stuff. So, I'll leave that up to you. If, Zolog, if you want Zolog's butchers to be the ones that went and gave Killbeerth the business. Eh, I mean, that's a little too far north, I think. Okay. Do you guys make any requests of her before you set out? Hmm. I could use some fresh arrows. Uh, yeah, you could purchase arrows from them for they'll give you they'll give you a slight discount even for having just done a done this great task for them out there. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead and purchase arrows at half price out of the PHB. Right. How much does how much does do arrows cost? I don't know, but I'm currently carrying zero gold, so I'm just going to take it on the party loot. <laughs> no, I mean like. I'm only down five. I feel like we could probably just divide up a quiver. Oh, yeah, probably. Spent all that time putting together these fletching rules. What do you guys do? Just buy arrows immediately. <laughs> <laughs> They're one gold for 20. Yeah, so for five silver, you can get 20 arrows from them. See, I'll, I'll take five of that if you don't need all of them. Yep. I'll take 15 then. And, also, Red, you I'll notice these arrows... What they're giving you, they're made, the arrowheads themselves are made of bone, and you see that it's a sharpened piece of bone where they've kind of taken the marrow out of the center, but left the hollow there. And you recognize it immediately as a delivery system for poison. It would be very easy to poison these arrows with lots of different... It would be easier to poison these than a standard metal arrowhead. Matt, okay. you're stealing the silver cell, so I can't adjust that. Thanks. Okay, so, what direction are you going to strike out and try to find orcs? Remember, each oh, I don't one, have permission. Each one of these hexes is one, one day's journey. So to get from shallow scale to the center of any of these hexes around is going to be one day. She wants you back in ten days. So, I think the best choice would be to start where they normally drop the, bo the, the boat. Yeah, I agree. 
Okay. Um, who has like nature or tracking? Survival. Animal handling. <laughs> Razu has survival. Only snakes. Birdie also has survival, okay. and <laughs> he's a. So my thought is we should Adric's we should head out nature. into an open area and then see if we can't find signs of orc groups, either individual raiders or larger groups passing. So here's what I want. First, I want you guys to tab which hex you want to set out into. Okay. And then I want you to tell me what approach you're taking, what skill you're using. Nature, animal handling, survival. Oh, yeah, right. Set out here? Yeah. Okay. That looks good, yeah. So right in front of where we think the orc den might be. All right. Like right in the middle. Okay. This would be about a day's journey from where Huyan thinks the orc den might be. But again, she doesn't know for sure. If only I know for sure. <laughs> okay. And what skill are we going to use to try to track down an orc patrol? I mean, I, I came up with a really good animal handling way, but I'll let everyone else decide. Well, animal handling would make a lot of sense in this case because, I mean, orcs do have animals with them. They, they're known to I use I was also thinking that and... I could just fly out ahead and look for startled birds fleeing from the orc travels. <laughs> that, that might Nature, work too. survival. Yeah, Adric is better. Adric is better survival than. Nature. Yeah. Okay, you guys have... can do that at advantage working together. So I'll let you guys take yeah. care of this one. Yeah. Both of you are yeah. trained in survival. I'll let you, one of you make it at advantage. Sure. Go ahead, Adrix, because I think you got the better wisdom score than I do. You got a hmm. pair of thirteens. So how is sixteen do you? Sixteen. Take sixteen. 16 on survival. Wait, you got a plus three? Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 So, whenever I roll in the random encounter table and I get a roll that doesn't make sense, I just ignore it like there's no encounter. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what's happening right now because I, I don't have any reason to have you guys meet a Pegasus at the moment. That, that's a Are stupid thing sure? on the table. Are no, you I think, sure? I think we want to meet a Pegasus. Are you positive? You meet a Pegasus. He... His name is Joe. He doesn't want to talk to any of you. Oh, oh I want Joe the Pegasus to be my friend. I'm going to hunt that Pegasus down later. <laughs> Sorry. We see a really nice Pegasus-shaped cloud in the sky. <laughs> Adrix. Sir. Take a level of exhaustion from pulling this rickshaw all day. Aww. Actually, make me a constitution saving throw. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an out on this one. If you make the save, ha -ha. I'll let you avoid a exhaustion. proficiency in that. <laughs> that is a 24. So they loaded this boat down uh, with all different kinds, primarily salted fish. All different kinds of fish in the lake. They know from... Uh, experience that's what the orcs came to the lake to get primarily but red you also see various herbs and stuff that you know would be useful in making poisons uh mm -hmm. some of you see other kind of poultices and things that would be useful for medicine a anything that the orcs would raid the lake to get they're just offering as tribute to kind of cut out the middleman stave off any attack so there's a good amount of weight that adrix is pulling across the plains and you guys do come across a couple of sites where you believe the orcs might have camped uh, out under the stars. They, they prefer open spaces with few trees. They prefer high ground to low ground. And that kind of helps you orient yourself hmm. as you are searching for them. At the beginning of the second day, at uh, first light, when Wendy goes up to make her first sweep around, uh, you see smoke rising from a campfire several miles from your position. They right, have, that seems easy enough. They have shot down Joe the Pegasus, and they have him roasting over a spit. <laughs> oh no! If he was a unicorn, he would have provided his own spit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> How close do you get to the camp to confirm that it's orcs before flying back? Uh, I mean... I'd probably just point them in that direction because you said this happened like right at the beginning of the day. This was so right after, just... yeah, right after you broke your fast, your first scout, your first sweep out to see what's up. 
Yeah, so I probably flew down, let them know that, so we, they could just start heading in that direction, because I can outfly them. Okay. So I figure I can point them in that direction to start marching, and then I can go take a look. Okay. Are you concerned at all that the orcs might open fire if they see you? No, not really. Okay. I mean, I'm a monk. <laughs> what is the plan for approaching this uh, orc camp? Because after a few... Uh, a few hours of marching, the rest of you on the ground level, you see the smoke coming up from the top of this hill. You speak their beast language, Adrax. I say you take point. Okay. I think we should, like, observe before we just walk into the middle of a camp of orcs. Should, uh... Probably, first of all, take our weapons and either hide them or leave them somewhere that we can retrieve them later because the lizard folk only approach the orcs with no weapons as a sign of that they're not there to fight. On the other hand, we also heard that they respect strength, right? What if we just kept our weapons and, like, as part of our convincing them to help us, we convince them they don't want to fight us. At the very least, we should have a white flag or something. How does Rasu feel about waving a white flag? Absolutely not. <laughs> so, so Rasu, how exactly would you indicate to a group of potentially hostile people that you're there to parlay? Well, it's, it's I, I would like to know this from a philosophical perspective. Well, if it were anyone else, probably, yes, I wave flag, but orcs, no. All right, so give us your orc perspective. Uh, put them all to the sword. That's a Leave bad like parlay. You, those cobal cobalts? <laughs> you ask my opinion, you got it. I mean, we know where Rasu stands, at least. All right, our mistake. Bert Bertie also wants to kill all the orcs. He doesn't like orcs. Okay, where's there's no orc killing right from the get go. Okay, we're, we we're can not kill the orcs kill. later if we need to. Yes, we will kill the orcs later, but only as a last resort. There's a we're time and a mission. place. Birdie, Birdie, uh, elbows Rasu and says, "If there's a uh, when there's a time and place." <laughs> All right, look. If we need to start killing orcs, the code word is goat. So no one use goat in regular conversation. But if someone says goat, that's a sign that we should all just start killing orcs. All right. I tell you what, if we need to kill orcs, the code word is an arrow going through an orc. <laughs> all right, Wendy, you have to understand that sometimes you might want to be talking to someone and not, you know, reach for your bow to indicate that you're about to start, you know, shooting them. Like, it could be useful to just have a normal conversation going at a standard cadence, and then suddenly we all hear the word goat and we know what to do. No, What's you're the right. the highest consider passive that. perception in this group? I have... <laughs> you're right, Red. I didn't consider that at all. I have a 17. 17. While this conversation is taking place, Bertie, you hear the sounds of my dog barking in the other room at absolutely nothing. <laughs> Don't worry, I have him. Get her! <laughs> Only snakes. You hear the sound of a large animal. It sounds like paws beating the grass on the other side of this uh, of this small hill, just out of sight. You just hear animals thundering in your direction. Uh, we got company incoming. Wendy looks around for a moment and she goes, wait a second. Do any of us have a white flag? <laughs> Birdie looks for a place to hide. Okay. This was perhaps our greatest plan yet. I mean, you're out in the grasslands at the moment, but I mean, you can duck behind a rock or into a bush or something like that. The downside is, of course, it is early morning, so it's very bright outside. Do I have yeah. to take off my weapons? I have a lot of weapons. I don't think we have time. And about this time, you see two orcs mounted on wargs crest the top of the hill. And they look down and they see all of you immediately. Tell them we don't uh, have a white Adrix, flag. 
<laughs> Adrix turns around and waves pleasantly. Okay. Tell them we're not here to fight and that these are gifts. And Adrix says in Orc, Hail friends, we come in peace, and we come bearing gifts. One of them pulls an arrow off his back and knocks his short bow. He's holding it off to the side. He's not pointing it at anybody. The other one looks you over. What did Birdie get on his hide check? Oh, I... Hold on. Yeah, it's probably fine. Uh, it would have been five plus stealth, so eight, so thirteen. The other orc calls back down to you and says, send the bird up with some of these gifts. And then he whips himself off of this warg and waits. Can I uh, quickly look over the cart and see something that's valuable and easy for birdie to carry? Not no, bird. This, not birdie. He said bird. I'm sorry. Yeah. Bird, yeah. This is Wendy. Yeah, Wendy. I didn't realize this could be confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy could carry anything in the boat here. I mean, you've got no small amount of gumbo that you've been working on making this week. So yeah, I grab the two most valuable items and hand them to Wendy. <laughs> two bowls of gumbo. There's nothing yeah, valuable Wendy, in Wendy as much as... Wendy takes those items yeah, and then takes also some gumbo because she's been making <laughs> that gumbo and she knows it's delicious. Okay. Uh, there's no valuable items in as much as coin or treasure or anything like that. I, mean, you, you I would have no idea what's valuable. A handful of food the, and gumbo. I take the very nicest gumbo. <laughs> and <laughs> as Wendy is delivering the gumbo, Adric says in Oric, we come from Shallow Scale Lake. Okay. I hop my way up the hill. You hop up the hill. And he grabs some of the gumbo from you. <laughs> Yep. And with two great, massive, dirty orc fingers, he just spoons down into it, fills That's his good, hand right? with slop, sucks on them, looks down at the rest of you and sees how much you all are carrying, says something to Wendy that she doesn't understand because he's speaking orc. I'm going to do my best to shout it out to Adrix. Okay. My best phonetic pronunciation. <laughs> Only you are a kangoo. <laughs> wrong, wrong kind of bird. Uh, make a charisma performance check. Let's see yeah, you if, got it. if you botch the pronunciation so bad that you insult these orcs. Well. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so, Wendy looks back down the hill and she's all, Ching Chong, Bing Bong. <laughs> Yeah, I, that's so bad that even I know I screwed that one up. <laughs> and I just and I just stand there for a second with the gumbo and just go. <sighs> Adrix, you're pretty sure Wendy said something uh, about being escorted back to the captain. But it might have been something about steamed hams. You're not sure. <laughs> Could go either way. And that does sound like Wendy. <laughs> A very panicked Adrix asks if he can approach. <laughs> the, the orc, first orc jumps back onto his ward. The second one <laughs> receives his arrow. And they give you a wave. And they start thundering back down the hill. Away from you. All right. Adrix follows. What is Birdie doing after this encounter? Like he's just hiding behind a rock with his bow drawn, like just in case trouble breaks out. But otherwise, not doing anything really. Well, I mean, at this point, you're watching your friends start to move away from you. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, I follow everybody. Okay. Sorry, I misunderstood <laughs> what was happening. Yeah, they take you across the plain. And eventually you see the site where the smoke is coming up from. Which is time for me to get a new map. Hooray! It's fun, right? I love, I love new maps. That's what I live for. I like for. new map time. 
Good old Google image search. There's a dedicated subreddit for D&D maps, but I haven't found it to be super useful so far. You know, I agree. I've been to that one. Not to agree. I uh, found a... Uh, I was looking for something the other day, and I found like this D&D map generator where they cut pieces out of all these maps like this, and they just string them together. Yeah, that, that one's pretty neat. I like this particular map because they show you the loot piles. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> sure if this is another loot pile, though, because you think they would have a line coming that's off. That's a like, refuse pile. It's a refuse <laughs> pile. Okay, that's that's the shithole, then. Uh-huh, that's why the bring and tents are right next to it. Mm. We'll just pretend like these <laughs> trees aren't here. Like I said, they want, us, they want areas where they have the high ground where they can see for a great distance around. And approaching this camp, you immediately see that... Uh, Rasu's approach would have been doomed to failure immediately. In fact, I want Rasu to make me a wisdom religion check. Oh. <laughs> That'll be hilarious. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let Adrix make this check, too. What am I rolling? Religion. Wisdom religion. Wisdom religion. Oh, I did. that's an 18. All right, so you got an 18. <clears throat> the man sitting in the center of the camp in front of this big tent here. You guys can go ahead and put yourselves on this map as you approach. I suppose I should spawn, just in case an arrow flies and I need to... <laughs> Why would that happen? Someone just shout out, goat, 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 goat. The man sitting in front of the big tent here, you immediately identify as the leader of this little patrol. Uh, Rasu, you notice that he is the rank of captain, which means he's captain of this one patrol in the greater war band of Zolog's Butchers. Adrix, you notice he's wearing paint across his face uh, in such a pattern that you recognize as Ilnival. Ilnival is kind of the god of war tactics in orc culture, which marks this particular orc as a master tactician. So, he's there. He's got his warg laying on the side of his tent. A warg, by the way, is a, a wolf that's as big as a horse. You can enjoy that. There are three more wargs sleeping the morning away over by the one loot pile. Over in front of each of these tents, you guys see a rusting orog. An orog is basically a mutant orc. They're bigger, they're meaner, they're dumber, they're stronger, they do more damage. There are two standard orcs sitting here sorting through these loot piles. Uh, you hear the loud snoring of several more orcs. You're not sure how many more, but emanating from all of these tents. And they have two slaves in the slave pen. The slaves you recognize as creatures called Mokdin. Mokdin are essentially humanoid pig people. Uh, they're large. They have hunched backs. They do have opposable thumbs. They do have language uh, and culture. I'll leave it up to you guys to determine how much contact each of you individually have had with Mokdin in the past. But these two look like they're in bad shape. You see there's an adult... Uh, and a child. Both of them are male. The adult looks like he's been worked over pretty badly. He's got bruising and scarring. And also in the slave pen, you see the remains of what was at one point a third adult Mokhtin, but now is just a few shreds of cloth and scraps of bloody bones. So the two riders with the orcs bring you guys into the camp. Uh, Adrix, go ahead and mark on this map where you want to leave your wagon. Um, 
Okay, let's leave it. Well, there's big old loot piles up there. I'm going through, so right there. You just pull it up next to the loot piles. Yeah. And as soon as your escorts uh, bring you into camp, they exchange some curt words with the orc captain. They're just announcing your arrival, letting him know that you've come from shallow scale. And then they're off on their patrol again. The two, those two orcs and those two wargs take back off. The captain stands up, strides over to you, gets the size, looks up, looks up, looks you all up and down, gets the size of you, looks over at the copious amount of tribute that you've brought, and you see a look of approval on his face. Then he turns back towards you, and he says, uh, in the common tongue, he asks what the butchers have done that... Shallow scale has graced, has graced them with the presence of their envoys. And then he immediately begins picking the breakfast out of his teeth with a bit of bone. <laughs> 